with our with our uh, uh, series on you and your feelings, and um, I I was going to move on, but I still felt one final time, uh, one final message with another direction again about uh, having peace in our hearts. And so after to, after this message, we will move on. We'll go on to other things. Um, and this morning, we're going to be talking still about living free from worry, anxiety, and fear. Final part, keep the peace. Keep the peace. And this is what we're going to look at this morning very simply. As I was praying for us yesterday afternoon, uh, those of you who are here this morning and also those that I knew would be watching uh, online this morning, um, I was praying and I, one of my prayers was, Lord, help me. Help me keep it simple. Help me simplify. And I'd already prepared m uh, most of the message. And I went back and I simplified further. And then I went back and I simplified again. And um, uh, and I believe this morning uh, what what we're going to look at it is going to be very simple. And um, I've removed quite a few scriptures. And we're we're going to just meditate a bit more on some of these scriptures. But as we look this morning at at living our lives free from worry, anxiety, and fear, uh, we're going to talk about keeping the peace. We talk about keeping the peace this morning. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, and your hearts must not be troubled or fearful. This was said in the night that he was betrayed before he was going to the cross a few short hours later. And when we read in John about what Jesus said to his disciples then and to us now as well, I, I encourage you, go back and look at it and keep this in mind. These were, these were his last words. Of course, he was going to be with them after the resurrection, but these words carry extra weight. And in those few hours, as Jesus was speaking to his disciples, all of them, including us, in those few hours and in that message and in that sharing from his heart, he was emphasizing and reminding them of what they would need when he returned to heaven a short time later. And it's what you and I need as well. We know these few chapters so well, John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. He talks about relationship, and he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He talks about the Holy Spirit who's going to come and take his place and be more helpful to us than Jesus himself was. And that's not heresy. It is the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which is, was not, uh, which is not limited by the physical body that Jesus was. And Jesus points ahead and he says, the Holy Spirit's going to take my place. Don't be afraid of him. Everything that you need, he's going to provide. All the things that I've taught you, he's going to bring it to remembrance. Even things that you're not yet ready to, to take in and to understand. The Holy Spirit's going to teach you. And so this is a message for us as well. And then included again and again and again in, that, in those last words are what Jesus said about having peaceful hearts. And we looked at this last week. This was our, our key passage last week. And we talked about this. The peace that Jesus gives, he can give because he's the Prince of Peace, right? That's from Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and of His kingdom and reign, there will be no end, but it will increase. And that is that comes in our hearts first, and then one day it will be seen in the world around us. But it begins now in our hearts, and we can we can live with this. And so we saw that in John fourteen twenty seven. But if you back up. At the very beginning, Jesus also says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Some of us have troubled hearts, don't we? Some of us have troubled hearts. And Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. And then near the end of it in John 16, he says, he talks about all that he has taught them in these few hours. And he says, I've told you these thing, things so that in me you may have peace. And here are some keys for us this morning. We're going to look at a few other scriptures, but look with me. 
um, at what we see at what we see here. Jesus says, I've talked with you in this way so that in me you may have peace. So let me give you a cliff note or a, a dummy's guide before we even get any further in the message message this morning. The peace that you and I will find, it's found in him. It's found in him. It won't be found in our circumstances. It won't be found in our situations because we live in a world that is shaking and the world is going to be even more shaken. Jesus himself said this. So when we hear, Jesus said, when, we, when you hear wars and rumors of war, rumors of wars, don't be afraid. When the earth is shaken, don't be afraid. But he says, you will have peace in me. In me you may have peace. And this is why he talks to us in the way that he does. He says, in this world, you will, you will have trouble. You will have trials and sorrows. This morning in our church family here, and those of us who are watching online, some of us are going through, as we sang this morning, deep waters. We're going through fiery trials. Troubles are filling our lives. And Jesus said, these things come. Oh, beloved, how we wish we could wish them away. How we wish we could pray them away. And sometimes God delivers us from these things. He does, doesn't he? Each one of us could give a testimony of how God brought uh, a miracle to take away these things in our lives. As Pastor Renee said this morning about Sister Bridget's mom as we prayed. And God sometimes does that. God doesn't always do that. And Jesus prepares our hearts. What a good father he is. What, what a good brother he is. And what a good father our God is. He prepares us. And he says, you will have these things in your life. But, be, but take heart. Take heart. I have overcome. I have overcome the world. And so God has done his part. And I want to talk to us this morning about our part. We've talked a lot about what God does for us. But even these few verses show us and give a hint that we have a part to play in keeping the peace that God gives us, right? In John 14, 1, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. And you say, that's hard. <laughs> My heart is troubled. My heart is troubled. And we're troubled for our, own, for our own situations and we're troubled for others as well. But Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. And then in John, then he says, your hearts must not be troubled or fearful in, John, in verse 27. And then he says, but take heart. He says, so that in me you may have peace. I've told you this. And so I want to talk for just a little bit this morning about how we can keep the peace that Jesus gives us, how we can maintain. And I want to encourage you right now as we talk about this, if you are struggling in this area this morning, if you have had peace and then you still keep have to fighting it and it seems like the peace evaporates and, and, you ha and you're struggling with feelings of fear and doubt, I want to encourage you this morning that you are not a bad Christian. I want to encourage you this morning that you are not failing in your walk of faith. I want to encourage you that you are not missing some secret that other Christians have and you, you just don't have it. You, you're just a bad Christian because you're struggling with these things. What I want to say to you this morning is this, and I say this to everyone of every age, and I'm so glad the young people are here this morning, because you know what? You will face the same things. You are facing the same things that your parents face, that adults face as well. And the reason is this. We have an enemy, every one of us. I don't care what your age is this morning. I think the youngest person here, maybe it's Caleb or Tobias, or, or maybe, maybe both of them together. And what I want to say to you this morning is, you have the same enemy I have. I don't have a different enemy from you. And he will try to take away the peace that's in your heart. He will try to attack you and make you afraid of all sorts of things. And whatever we are, whatever our age this morning, whatever our situations, we will have to learn to fight in this area. We're going to talk about how we fight and how we keep the peace this morning. And I want to talk to you about this because the devil never fights fair. Don't you wish he would fight fair as we fight fair? Okay, when somebody's feeling bad, when they're down, when they've had a hard day, I'll back off and I'll give them a little bit of a break. Wouldn't you like it? He is such a bad devil. He's such a bad devil. He never fights fair. And you know what? He waits till you're down. He waits till you've something 
worse has happened. He waits till you've really been struggling. He waits till you're extra tired. He waits till the middle of the night when you feel all alone. And he says, let me try now. Let me shoot an arrow of fear now. Let me shoot an arrow of worry or anxiety now. And you know what, young people? You are not exempt from that. You're part of it as well. If you are God's child, he's going to fight you. But you know what? I don't care what your age is this morning, young or old. You can fight back with the tools that God has given you in his strength, and we will overcome. We do not have to be overcome. We can be overcomers. We can be overcomers. We have a part. So don't feel badly if you're struggling this morning, and don't, don't get down on yourself. Fight the fight, and we're going to see how we fight this morning. And so what we talked about when we looked at this, the very first message was that we take those anxious thoughts, we take those worries, we take those fears, and instead of letting it weigh our hearts down, instead of fretting and worrying, remember one of the steps was we take that worry and we turn it into prayer, right? Remember we talked about that the very first week when we looked at that, and we looked at this passage that we all know so well. By the way, if you have not yet memorized any scripture, here's a great place to start, brothers and sisters. It really is. Here's a great pl place to start. Philippians 4. And um, Paul writes, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he says, don't worry, don't be anxious about anything, anything. Hey, guys, young people, are some of you worrying about your studies or your, or your exam or what you're going to do? Jesus says, don't worry about anything. You say, how can I not worry? How can I not worry? You don't know the pressure I face in all of us. You don't know what I'm going through. Remember that this is Paul writing this. And you know what? When he wrote this, it was about 61 AD. He was in prison in Rome as he writes this. How can Paul write that from prison? Don't worry about anything. I'd be worrying. Me, I worry about cold and dark and bugs. You know, and I imagine he had all of those things and rats and worse in prison. I, I, I worry about those. Paul says, don't worry about anything. And he says, how? But in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The New Living Translation says, tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Isn't that encouraging? That's just a simple, uh, that's a, a simple way of looking at it. And so we take it. We take our worry, and instead of having a worry list, we make it a prayer list. You know, if you have gone to God in prayer and said, Oh, God, and you've prayed about things, and you finish prayer, and you still feel exactly the same way, and you're still worried, then you know what we've done? We've only complained and whined. <laughs> Keep on until you, until you get, until you receive from the Lord what you need. Because he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we pray until peace comes to our hearts. We may not have an answer yet. The situation may yet be unchanged. But the peace of God comes in and it guards our hearts like a mighty warrior, like a mighty soldier. He'll guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. It's hard to separate what we are inside, but I, I, to me, that's just so simple. Your hearts and your minds, it really, to me, I just see it very simply as my, what I feel and what I think. Yeah? Maybe that's a way we can look at it. What I feel and what I think. And the peace of God comes in, and the peace of God is like a mighty warrior that sets a guard around your heart. Why do we set a guard? If the enemy is defeated and he's done with and you've won the battle and he is vanquished and dead and gone, there's no need to set a guard, is there? There's no need to keep being alert. But Paul says the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That means that you have won the battle, but the war continues. You've won the battle, but the war continues. And so the peace of Christ comes around your heart and it keeps you safe. But I want to say something to you this morning. Please don't stop with verse 7. That's where most of us stop. 
don't we? Because this is the part, it's easy to remember. Look with me at the two verses that come after this, verses 8 and 9. And here's a key to you and me this morning about how we keep the peace, how we maintain the peace once we have, once the peace of God comes in to guard our hearts and minds. So here is the peace of God guarding our hearts like a warrior, like a warrior. You can imagine him this morning. Here he is with his, his weaponry, the peace of God, the weaponry of the Lord, which is mighty and powerful, standing guard in front of your heart, behind, before, on either side, above and below. And it says, here's our part, finally, brothers and sisters and young people and children, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If this list is, is hard for you to remember, go to an easier translation. Young people, you can go to the message if you want to, or New Living Translation. You can go to something else and, um, and, and get, a, get a translation that you can memorize, okay? You can get a translation. So the peace of God comes into our hearts. Do I need to stop? Okay, we keep going. The peace of God comes into our hearts. How are we going to keep that peace, maintain it strong? Our part is to feed the peace, if you want to think about it that way, right? It's to, and, and so we look at this, and so Paul says, these things that will keep the peace. What will keep the peace in your heart? It's something that is pure, it's lovely, it's admirable, it's excellent, it's praiseworthy. Think about these things. You know, may I make a, uh, a, a timely and a practical example? I don't know how many of you are kind of keeping up with what's going on in Hong Kong on an ongoing basis. Are some of you doing that? You're kind of keeping up on social media, maybe, or Reddit or Telegram or, or any of these other things or, or you're watching. I have been, just as I've looked at what's going on, and sometimes when I'm home, I would have the TV on or I'd have my phone on and be looking at the live feeds from various places. And a few weeks ago, I realized something. I could not continue to do that. It's not that I don't care about what is going on, but I could not continue to do that and keep a peaceful heart because it was bringing turmoil into my heart and into my life. And for me, I learned something that I've known it before, but for me, it was a practical example again. And so what I want to say to you is, if, you, if you've had the peace of God, but you find yourself struggling in this area or in another area, identify, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, because he will. He's the one who leads us and guides us. Ask him to help you see, Lord, where am I opening something in my thinking and in my feeling that is bringing turmoil into my life, that is taking peace away from me? And it may be something to do with this. And it doesn't mean that we just shut the door and we, and we don't think about it. We're, we're not made that way. But don't let it dominate. Don't let it dominate. But brothers and sisters, there are other areas as well. You may be fretting and worrying about a situation or something like that, let the Holy Spirit identify those things in your life. We're not being Pollyannas. We're not saying, okay, I'm just going to think good thoughts as Bobby, was it McFerrin said, don't worry, be happy. We've, thought, we've talked about that before, right? Well, you know what? Christians aren't called to that, don't worry, be happy. Christians are called to this, which is truth, which is truth. And instead, it is yes, Things are like this, but God is greater and God is higher. And God has a stronger truth. God has a stronger truth. And so this is how we keep the peace. Look with me at verse 9. It says, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice. Paul could say this. You know why Paul could say this? He had learned. He had learned, hadn't he? And we've got to learn. We've got to learn. And may I say something to you? Young people, especially young people this morning, you are in such an enviable position. I really mean this. Do you know what? You can learn things now that have taken some of us who are older Christians years to learn 
or we're still learning it. You can learn it now. You don't have to wait till later. You can learn this because this is for you. God speaks to you, you as well. And then Paul ends that by saying, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. Isn't that encouraging this morning for keeping the peace? Let me give you, so in keeping that peace, let me give you just a few verses really quickly, uh, just, to, just to give you, and then we're going to focus on final two verses a little bit later this morning. Uh, I was, I'm so, I, I love these verses. Look at Psalm 101, 3. Um, the whole passage is wonderful, but look at this. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. Hey, let me ask you something this morning. Those of us sitting here and those of us that are watching online this morning, what are you looking at on TV that is your entertainment? You say, oh, Pastor Jennifer, now you're meddling now. Don't bother me about that. What are you reading if you like to read? Is it worthless? Is it, does, it have, does it have little to no value? If it does, it's going to rob you of your peace. It's going to rob you of your peace. This is a wonderful verse. And the psalmist says, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. And so maybe we need to take stock a little bit, don't we? Maybe we need to kind of go through the things that we are opening our eyes to and opening our thinking to. Do we need to remove it from our lives? Does it mean that you can only look at preaching and only look at and, and only whatever? No, I'm not saying that at all. But let the Holy Spirit walk you through some of the things in your life. And if you need to remove some things or close those things, do it. Wouldn't you rather have a life and a heart that is really peaceful and without worry and anxiety and fear? God gives us the tools and the weapons to keep the peace that he has given. I love also Psalm 1. You know, I've told you before, Psalm 1 is, a, is one of the passages I learned. I'm so glad I had really strict parents growing up. Um, and I learned this, I think, when I was maybe six years old. And, I, and I've, in the King James... So you can do it in the New Living Translation. Um, and I learned this when I was five or six. Do you know what? I've never forgotten it. I can still quote the whole psalm. It's not a long one, um, but I often quote it. I often quote it in other passages as well. I'm so glad my mom made me do it, and she gave me some money for it after I did it. Um, <laughs> parents, may I say that's a great way to motivate your children. And I have no problems with that. Um, so here, here are some of the ways. But this one passage, it says, uh, those that, it, the blessed is the one who doesn't sit in the seat of mockers. Who are your friends? Who are the people that you spend time with? Are you with people that tear, with verbally, that tear down, that are making fun of, that are always saying negative things? If you are, it may be time to form some new friendships because it will affect you. You say, ah, it's just funny. Oh, they're just making, oh, it, it's nothing serious. God's word says you'll be blessed if, if that's not part of your life, if that's not part of your life. And this is how we keep the peace. This is how we keep the peace. By the way, adults, you think I'm just talking to the young people. We, it, this is for us as well, isn't it? This is for us as well. Um, I remember one time when the Sister Betty and I were in China in the early years, and things were tough at times. Uh, it, we did, there wasn't always enough food. There wasn't always enough heat. Those of you who are in China, you remember those years, don't you? And I remember one day, Sister Betty, who is such a great friend, said to me, she said, okay, let's make a pact. Today, we can only have one complaint because our conversation, <laughs> uh, seriously, <laughs> and you say, well, come on, you should have been a better Christian, Pastor Jennifer. How about no complaint? Please, I'm only human. <laughs> but we agreed. We said, okay, today we only get one complaint each because our conversation had descended to. <laughs> and you know, praise the Lord. I'm so glad for a friend like that. And, and you should be happy for a friend like that as well as we encouraged one another in this area. And it really made a difference. And our hearts were so much more peaceful. Now that's kind of a lighthearted thing, but it's really true, isn't it? It's really, really true. So as we, as, we come to a, as we come to a close this morning, let me give you a few verses that are our key verses this morning um, that you can meditate on that will help you. These final uh, tools to help us keep the peace and maintain the peace. Isaiah 26, 3, this, is, this really is the key. Speaking of God, he says, Isaiah says, 
you will keep. In fact, shall we read it together? You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you because they trust in you. Amen. Amen. Here's a key verse for us, brothers and sisters, this morning, and young people as well. If we will fix our minds on the Lord, we will have perfect peace. You say, perfect peace? Wow, is there anything perfect in this world? Perfect peace means it's complete. It means it's, a, it's, a, it's whole. It's whole. There aren't any chinks in the armor. It's a whole peace that surrounds you, and it will keep you. And if you will set your thoughts on God and on his ways, he, he will keep you in perfect peace. You say, I feel like I'm always fighting. I feel like I'm always fighting. Yes, there's a fight, but take up the weapons he has given you. Set your mind on him, and he will keep you in perfect peace. Amen? Yes. Amen. And here's another passage, same, a companion passage from Psalms. It says in Psalm 16, verses 8 and 9, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also rests securely. Oh, beloved, the right hand has to do with power and authority and might and protection. That's what it means in the Old Testament. And he says, what does it say here? I've set the Lord before me because he's at my right hand. You and I this morning, some of us feel that in our lives there are things that are big and strong. There are giants in our lives that are overwhelming us. May I say to you, set the Lord before you. If you need to go to his word, take more time just to whisper prayers to the Lord. Feed on the word of God and you will experience the Lord at your right hand, bigger and stronger than any giant in your life. And I know that some of you have giants this morning. Look at me and I'm not, look with me at these last verses and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to stop in about, in, in about a couple of minutes as we look here. Because he's here at my right hand, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Some of you this morning say, I feel like I'm being shaken. Do you know what this means? It doesn't mean that we're not like this sometimes. The word shaken means I will not fall. That's what it means. That's, that's the original meaning in the hero, Hebrew. I will not fall. God will keep you through these times. This is, I will not be shaken. Beloved, he's going to keep you. He's going to keep you. Set your heart on him. He's going to keep your heart at rest. And then your heart will be, verse 9, glad. Your spirit will be able to rejoice through the darkest valley, through the greatest battle, through the most difficult circumstances. You may and I will have the joy of the Lord rejoicing in our hearts. And the world will look at us and they will say, I don't understand. How can you be happy? Look at your life. Look what you're facing. How can you be? You should be worried. But we have the peace of the Lord that guards our hearts and we can be, at, we can be rejoicing. And I love how this verse ends. My body rests securely. Beloved, fear, worry, and anxiety can tear you up, can't it? It can rob you of any physical rest. How many of us, we lie awake at night and saying, oh God, if this happens, what am I going to do? Oh Lord, if this, if this, oh God. And we are torn not just in our spirits and in our souls, but in our bodies, in our bodies. And God says to us this morning, I have rest for you in body, in soul, in spirit. Amen. Amen. As we close this morning, and Pastor Renee is going to come with a few announcements. I'm going to give you one more passage, and we won't have time this morning to go, uh, to go in depth. But I just want to give this to you to, as, a, as a companion to what we've looked at in Isaiah 26.3 and in Psalm 16.18 and 9. And I'm just going to read it for you, okay? 
And if you want to, you can read along, you can close your eyes and listen, you can mark for later, but receive the words of the Lord this morning that bring it all together. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone, for my hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Would you close your eyes this morning? I'm going to pray for you. If you're watching with us online this morning, you join us in prayer this morning. I'm going to pray for all of us as we take to heart these words of the Lord as we pour out our hearts to him, pour out those things that, have, that you feel like have been shaking your heart and set him before you and let his peace guard you and you will be able to keep the peace with the weapons that God has given you as you set your heart and you set your thoughts upon him. Lord, we come to you this morning on this blessed day, on your day, the Lord's day, and we know that every day is your day. But Lord, we come to you in this special time and we set our hearts upon you. We thank you for the peace that you've given us. But Lord, we confess some of us, we have struggled so hard in this area. But you give us the tools to stand and to fight and to overcome and not to be overcome. We set our thoughts upon you. We will not set worthless things before our eyes. We will think on those things that are true and pure and lovely. And you will be with us. We will not be shaken. You will be our stronghold and our fortress. You will give us rest in body and soul and spirit. You will hear us as we pour out to you the things that fill our hearts and you will take us into your arms and draw us to yourself and give us your peace and may your peace surround us as a mighty warrior, as a guard upon our hearts, that the enemy will find no opening, no chink in the armor, that he will be defeated, and that we will live in the peace and the security and the rest and the hope and the rejoicing that you have promised your children. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.